Welcome to the Lionfish Tutorials, a series of how-to instructional videos covering collecting and handling, monitoring, and dissection. The marine environment is a diverse and changing habitat. Invasive lionfish are a recent threat to our native marine systems, and there is great concern over the impacts they are causing. The good news is that local control through regular removals can be very successful in keeping lionfish numbers down and minimizing their impact. Okay, so today we're going to go over how to do a very thorough lionfish dissection. Now the first thing to keep in mind when doing these dissections is if the fish has been kept cold on ice, these venomous spines can still sting you. So you need to take extreme caution while handling the fish. I'm just going to point out where these venomous spines are. So on the dorsal side of the fish, we have 13 of these spines. You can see them all right here. They're very, very sharp. Now, if you turn the fish to the belly, they have two pelvic fins, which are right here and right here. And there is one spine at the leading edge of each pelvic fin. So there's one spine right there where I'm holding. And then the second pelvic spine is right there on the other fin. And then also on the belly of the fish, you have the anal fin, and there are three very short spines at the leading edge of the anal fin. So you can barely see them right there. There's three of them. So that makes 18 total venomous spines. So those are the spines that you have to watch out for. These pectoral fins on the side, they're not venomous. The caudal fin, this is not venomous. And then the soft dorsal fin is not venomous as well. So the areas you have to watch out for are the dorsal side, and then those two pelvic spines, and then the three anal spines. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna weigh the fish. Um, but first we wanna blot it dry to get off any excess water. So you just blot it. And then you wanna make sure that your scare is, scale is teared. Then you just place the fish on the scale, making sure that no part of the body is, is touching the table. And we record this in grams, so that's 351 grams. The next external measurement that we're going to take is gait height and gait width. It's basically how big the mouth is. So we're going to open the mouth as wide as it can go. And then we're going to take this ruler and measure gait height in millimeters. So it's 35, and then gape width. Just 34. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some tissues um, that are gonna be used for some genetic sampling. Um, I'm gonna take three different tissue types. I'm gonna take a sample of, of gill. I'm gonna take some a fin clip and then some muscle tissue. Um, it's very important to make sure that you clean your instruments um, and source isopropyl alcohol um, to make sure that the instruments are not contaminated in between samples. Um, so to get the gills, you just open it up and then cut out a one centimeter uh, sample of it. Take your tweezers. And then for the fin clipping, you can just take it from the pectoral fin here. just cut off another square and there you have a nice sample and then the muscle tissue you can just take it from the flesh right here Now we're going to get some internal uh, measurements, so we need to open the fish up. If you turn it over on the belly, you have the urogenital opening right here. You're just going to stick your scissors in there, and you want to make sure to make a shallow cut, and if you lift up on the skin, you'll ensure that you won't cut anything inside the fish. So you just very carefully just 
just cut right down the middle. And then once you reach the pelvic fins here, you're going to have to cut a little bit deeper to cut through that pelvic girdle. And then once you reach this point, you're going to cut up along the gill arch here by those pectoral fins. And then you can pull this back and you have a really nice look at the inside of this fish here. So I'm going to go over some of the internal anatomy of this lionfish here. Again, we have the gill rakers right here. Now this orange organ right here is the liver. This right here is one of the gonads. This is a female. I'll go over sexing in just a minute. This white organ right here, all along here, that's the swim bladder. They use that to control their buoyancy in the water. This organ right here, that is the stomach. It can actually expand up to 30 times its normal size. All of this white stuff all in here. This is all fat, interstitial fat. And then you can see the intestines in here. And then the other gonad is right here. Okay. <laughs> in order to sex the fish, you need to look at the gonads, um, which often are just lying right on top of the swim bladder. So in this fish, this is just one of the gonads. This is a female, um, and for females, we have four different stages for the gonads um, that can indicate their reproductive stage. Now, this is an F2 female. Um, you can't see individual eggs in there, but the, the ovaries are a cream color, and they are much larger than the F1 stages. Now, F3 is the next stage up, and then you have F4. So this is an F2 individual. Complete gonad staging can be found in the NOAA Technical Memorandum on Lionfish Dissections. This includes information for two male stages and four female stages. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut both of these gonads out, and we're going to get a gonad weight. I'm using this analytical scale right here. Okay, pause. So I'm going to cut out this ovary. Good, we're cutting out the ovary here. There's one. I'm just going to flip everything over to get the other. There's the other ovary. And now we're going to weigh it using this analytical scale right here. Turn the scale on. And we want to make sure we tear it. And we're going to get a weight of both of these gonads. 14.63 grams. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually remove all of this um, body fat and then take a measurement of that. Um, so all of this white stuff that you see, this is all body fat. So we're going to carefully cut this away. Okay, so now I'm going to measure the fat um, using the volume. So what we have is we have 15 milliliters of water in this graduated cylinder and all you're going to do is just drop the fat in the graduated cylinder and see what the change in the water level is. Okay, so now once you have all the fat in the graduated cylinder, you can take a volume rating and right now this is at 19.2. So that means there was 4.2 milliliters of fat in this fish. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at what is in this lionfish's stomach. 
Um, and we're going to take the stomach out of the body cavity. But first we're going to look in the mouth and make sure that there are no prey items protruding out of the esophagus. And it looks clear. Okay, now I'm going to carefully take the stomach out of the body cavity. carefully cutting away and then you want to make the cut as far up as you can and you're just going to cut the stomach right there the esophagus. now we're going to open the stomach up so I'm going to carefully grab the stomach here and then I'm going to make a cut along the length of the stomach, again making sure to keep the cut very shallow so I don't cut any of the stomach contents inside. And just push any prey items out. sort through the prey items very carefully. Okay, it looks like we definitely have two shrimp. And the rest of this is just mush. So when we're classifying the prey items, um, we have five different categories, which indicate how um, digested the prey items are. So a digestion level of one means that the prey item was just eaten, and you can um, identify the prey item down to the species. A level two is it's been digested just a little bit, and you can still identify it to the species. Level three is you can usually identify it down to family. Um, level four is very digested. And then level five is, is what we would call this. It's what we call mush, and you can't identify it at all. So right here we have two shrimp that I would classify as level three. So what we're gonna do with these prey items is we're gonna take a total length in millimeters these two shrimp. So we've got 21 millimeters and 20 millimeters. And then we can actually get a weight for each of these shrimp using our analytical scale. The first shrimp was 0.12 grams. Second shrimp was 0.13 grams. Then we can actually get a volume for both of those prey items as well, going using the same method that we use to measure the fat. So we have a known volume in the graduated cylinder here, and then we'll just drop each shrimp in. And measure the volume again. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the otoliths, um, which are basically the fish's ear bones, and they are located in the brain cavity. Uh, so we need to um, cut off the head. 
So the first cut you want to make is in between these horns right here and the first dorsal spine. We're just going to make a cut down and sever the spinal cord. Now once, you're, once you've severed the spinal cord, you can actually turn the head face down like that. Cut through. How, now we have the head removed. What we're going to do is we're going to cut out the gills to give us easier access. Okay, so you want to grab the gills like so and then make a cut right here through gill arches. And then now you can simply just pull the gills back. Now this bulb right here, this is the brain cavity. What we're going to do is you're going to take your two fingers and run them along either side of that brain cavity. So what you want to do is you want to take your two fingers and run them along either side of the brain there. We're going to push them all the way forward and then we're going to make a very clean cut right here. This is going to give us access to the brain cavity. So this next cut is very important. I'm just going to cut on this side of my fingers here. I'm just going to saw back and forth very carefully. You don't want to crush down because that will not allow us a clean entry into the brain cavity. So the otoliths are just free-floating on either side of the brain. So you want to be very gentle when you're extracting the otoliths out because they can be quite fragile. So what you want to do is you want to turn the tweezers to about a 30 degree angle so you can just grab the otoliths out of the brain cavity. And there's one otolith, and then the other one will just be in the same spot on the other side. There's the other otolith. Mm -hmm.